exclusive. Hello all, it's JMix here. And I wanted to let all my YouTube subs and viewers know that I'm working diligently editing down interviews to provide more content for this channel. And as I was mixing the Big D Harp interview, I cut out some parts for quality issues and I ran across this outtake. In this outtake, Daryl Harper explains to us in detail a classic death row punishment at one of the infamous meetings. So without any further ado, please enjoy this outtake with Daryl Harper. People have stated that Suge Knight ran a tight ship. Can you tell us about the internal politics at death row? Yeah, um... Believe me, um... In some ways, death row was run very loose. There was... A lot of business wouldn't be really be being, being taken care of right, and that's and it's just that's not, but on other points, Shug was like a captain, and I mean he was like a captain and knew all about his ship. He and he ran a tight, strict ship. There, I mean, and he check. There's only a couple of people that I ain't never really saw him check or get at kind of like fierce. One of them was Nate Dog. I ain't never saw him talk to Nate Dog sideways. You know, um, but as for everybody knowing the policies or whatever like that, yeah, everybody understood that uh, this is a, this was a ship that Suge ran, and you didn't want to get on his bad side. You didn't want to be at a meeting, or you didn't want to be have him call you to his office and uh, have to uh, be corrected or whatever. You know, worse than just correct. You know. Uh, you didn't want to be on the bad side of Shug. You didn't want any information getting back to him where you're not a team player. You know, he would check somebody about, I mean, he would he would check just about everybody about that. Like, if you thought you were above this person or working with this person or being fair with this person, you know, that that was that was like a, and that way him and Pac was alike because Pac was a really a team player, you know, and Shug was more like, he wants that whole ship to run kind of like equal, you know, like everybody is everybody, you know, and you work with him, you work with, um, you work with this person, you work with that person. You didn't want to be like, like, you know, when you grew up in your house and you did something wrong and your brother and sister be saying you in trouble. We heard those terms. We talking about a grown man talk, dealing with grown people. And I, we used to hear that all the time. I think you're in trouble. I think so and so somebody in trouble. Like, like a parent. That was like common talk. I think he's in trouble. Should have upset, you know. And it was. I grew up with a very, very abusive stepdad. And I said, oh, I said many, many times that Shug and my relationship with Shug and being around Shug, it was so similar to my stepdad that I grew up with. Very abusive guy. And the reason why I say that was because I remember times, you know, had being nervous in my story because I didn't know what was going to happen at a meeting. I didn't know who he was mad at. Everybody around the hallways asking about who he mad at. Who's it? Everybody whispering before the meeting. Uh, who, what, who did what? Who just, everybody trying to figure out, you know, the temperature of, of trying to gauge what might happen in the meeting. Is he happy today? We used to do that when I grew up. My mom and me and my siblings, we would always wonder, what mood my stepdad would be in before he got home, before we would know how we could could perform or how, how we would be that evening. If he came in and came in and started playing on the organ, then we knew that was a good night. If he came in and started complaining from the, from the, then everybody was, every soldier to themselves. Who didn't do this? That's him. He folks did that. And it was the same thing with Shug. When he came in and people felt like, oh, yeah, he tripping. Everybody trying to figure out, Who's in trouble? Who did what? You know, everybody trying to actually alienate themselves from that person too. You know, so it was uh that was strange. That was weird. You know, that was real weird. A lot of people, I don't know, a lot of stars probably would admit it, but I'm giving it to you real. I, people was one. I'm talking about stars was asking each other, hey, who, what are you tripping about? What cause tripping about? What are you? What are you? You know, uh, yeah, people were wondering. What what you never knew what might happen in a death row meeting. Can you take us inside a death row meeting? My very first death row meeting, my very first meeting, they just thought I was a guy hanging around because they just used to seeing me around the studio. They didn't know I'd already had a deal. But when Suge entered the meeting, 
everybody had already been in there. It was Hammer and Snoop and Quick and all of the people, all of the stars. And um, when Suge finally entered the room, everybody's already in there waiting for him. And when Suge came through the door, it was a guy walking right in front of him. Suge was slapping him in the head, you know, slapping him upside his head. Pow! Pow! And the dude was turning around, hollering, saying, Suge, come on, man. Suge, pow! Slapping him. And the, as a matter of fact, it was so weird because the first few slaps, I blatantly saw him, but I was having to tell myself, it looked like he was a really hidden dude. You know, the first two, I couldn't believe it. Here's his grown man. And he slapped him upside the head. And I'm like, man, he really hitting this dude. <laughs> and then when he got in there, he had a couple of his boys uh, uh, punch the dude all in the stomach. No hitting in the face. No hitting in the face. Punch him in the stomach. Then they snatched the dude's pockets off. Took his money and was sitting on him. I was like, oh, man, this is my first experience of a death row meeting. I was like, oh my goodness. So the the, the stories are the stories are real. Because I always I heard so many things about Shug, but I was always that kind of person to show me, you know, like when I see it then I believe it. My first Tef Row meeting I believed it. I was like, Oh, it's already popping up in here. That became the way things went. It was never like Shug just being this um guy who picked on people. But it was always something happened, you know, and just how he reacted to it. You know, he would have to, I ain't never heard him just uh, picking on a person. He tested me a few times, but I mean, like to see where I was, but he didn't, he didn't like basically lean on me. He just kind of let me, I, I don't know, I, I think he, because even after that meeting, I remember Nate Dong meeting me in the hallway saying, Hey man, he's just trying to let you know where he is. That that was all about uh that was his way to let you know that um he's trying to feel you out, letting you know where you you know what where things was, you know. Once again, this is J Mix here. Part three with Daryl will be up shortly. Thanks to all my YouTube subs and viewers. I'll see everybody on the next upload. One love. Hey, this is Money B from Digital Underground, and I'm interrupting this J-Mix interview to ask all my friends to check out the Going Way Back Show live stream every Tuesday night, 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on TRadioV.com. And be sure to subscribe to the Going Way Back Show YouTube channel. See you then. Peace. J-Mix exclusive. What up, what's up?